Hello friends, welcome back to today's Swahili lesson. I'm so happy once again to teach you Swahili. If you want to know real Swahili, speak like a native, you are in the right place. You are in the right place. Those who are new to this channel, you're much welcome. Karibuni sana. In today's lesson, we are going to learn about a very interesting topic. We are going to learn about personal pronouns and how to construct a sentence in present tense. So thank you so much for joining me. Let's jump into the video. All right, so we start. So personal pronouns in Swahili, we refer to them as viwakilishi nafsi. Viwakilishi nafsi. So this is personal pronouns in English. Viwakilishi nafsi. So you want to know how to use the personal pronouns to construct a sentence. So follow me. So we have first person, second person, and third person. And we also have the singular and the plural. Okay. So we are going to begin with the first one, which is Mimi. Mimi, from the way I'm pronouncing it, Mimi, you already know that I'm talking about I or me, right? Mimi, I or me. So that's how we say it in Swahili. If I'm referring to myself, I'll just say Mimi, okay? Mimi. So it's very simple. It's like saying me, me, but the spelling is different. So we just say Mimi. So Mimi is I or me in English. So this particular uh, personal pronoun is always represented by me, me, which is like our subject prefix. So if you're not using Mimi, you can always start your sentence with me. So Mimi is always represented by me. Okay, so I can say Mimi, I can start a sentence with Mimi, or I can start a sentence with me, which will also refer to me, right? Okay, so let's look at the second one, Wewe. So Mimi is the first person, but Wewe, the other person you might be talking to. Wewe, so if you're pointing at someone, Wewe, even though it's not good to point at people, all right, so um, let's continue. If you are referring to a second person, wewe, in Swahili, it's wewe, like that, and it's represented by u. So you say wewe u, wewe u. So that's another person you are talking about, wewe u, you, okay? Let's move to the third one, yeye. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah means he or she. So you find that in Swahili, we do not have a specific word for he and a specific word for she, like in English. So we are using yeah, yeah, which represents he, she, he or she. So yeah, yeah is always represented by a. Ah. Yeah, yeah, a. Ah. Yeah, yeah, a. Ah. Okay, yeah, yeah, ah. And then we move to sisi. Sisi. So maybe if we are many, I'll say sisi. We. Sisi. We. Or us. We. So in Swahili we say sisi. 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 We. And it's always represented by two. So you say sisi, two. Okay. Let's continue. Next, we have nini. Nini. So nini means you all. So it's like you, but plural. Some people will say y'all, okay? But you all, okay? So you put in mind, it's like I'm talking about you, but in a group, or maybe let me say two or more people. So you all. So in Swahili, we say nini. Or some people would say nini, like this. 
Nini. So you either say Nini or Nini, which refers to you all, or let me say you plural, okay? So that's Nini. And then lastly, we have wow, which is they or them. So we say wow. So if you are referring to them, you say wow in Swahili. Wow, they. Wow, they. Okay? So, nini is always represented by m. Mm, mm. So, m in Swahili, we just say m. Mm. And wow is always represented by wa. So, you say wow, wa. Okay? So, let's go through it one more time. Don't give up. Continue watching. It's easy. So, let me take you through one more time. So, we have nini, ni. Wewe u, yeye a, sisi tu, nini, m, wao, wa. Okay? And the English translation is right here in the middle. So let's look at sentences. Sentences. Very easy. So today we are only focusing on present tense. Okay? So in Swahili, for present tense, you will always see na, N-A, na. That means it represents present tense, something that's happening right now, okay? Present tense, always represented by na. So don't forget, if you see na, know that that sentence is all about present tense, okay? So when we come to future and past, I'll also tell you what you use for the same. But now, just focus on present tense, right? So let's look at examples in a sentence. So starting with me, which is me, I can have this sentence. Mimi nina soma kitabu. Mimi, mimi nina soma kitabu, which means I... I am reading a book, right? I am reading a book. So, for example, if I have a book here, so if I'm going through this book like this, I can tell my friend, I am reading a book. And in Swahili, I'll say, Mimi nina soma kitabu. Mimi nina soma kitabu, okay? So that's, I am reading a book. I'm referring to myself, first person. All right. So the word soma in Swahili means read or study. Read or study. Soma. And then kitabu is book. So this book, we call it kitabu. This book, we call it kitabu. So if I am reading a book right now, I'll say, Mimi nina soma kitabu. Okay, Mimi Nina Soma Kitabu. I am reading a book. Okay, I hope you understood that. Then another sentence you can use wewe. Now referring to second person. Wewe, you. Okay, so I'm referring to you. Maybe you're doing something. Let's see what you might be doing right now. Wewe, u na imba wimbo. Wewe una imba wimbo. This means you are singing a song. You are singing a song. Wewe u na imba wimbo. Wewe una imba wimbo, right? You are singing a song. So the word imba, the word imba is sing. And then wimbo is song. Right? So we have wimbo to mean song and then the action imba means sing. Okay? So if I combine the sentence wewe una imba wimbo, I'll write like this. Wewe una imba and then we have wimbo. Clear, right? Wewe una imba wimbo. You are singing a song. Very easy like that. I hope you're getting me. Let's continue to something else. 
So the next one is yeye. Yeye a. Remember, yeye a. So you're going to look at yeye a, okay? Yeye anakula ndizi. Yeye anakula ndizi. He or she is eating a banana. So ndizi is banana. Ndizi is banana. Kula is eat. Kula eat. Ndizi banana. So if he or she is eating a banana right now, then we say yeye anakula ndizi. Yeye anakula ndizi. Okay, let me try and eat banana on her behalf. So if I'm eat, if he or she is eating this banana, remember it's not me, but I'm just eating it on her behalf. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So ndizi, ndizi, banana in Swahili. Yeye anakula ndizi. So if it's me eating the banana, how am I going to say it? Can you try in the comment section? I am eating a banana. Let me help you. I'll say, Mimi ninakula ndizi. Mimi ninakula ndizi. So ndizi is banana. The spelling is right here. Mm -hmm. Mimi ninakula ndizi. Like that. All right, so let's continue. Sisi, we, okay? Assuming that we were many standing here, so I could refer to us Sisi, we. We is represented by two. So if I want to construct a sentence in present tense, I'll say Sisi tuna andika barua. Sisi tuna andika barua, which means we are writing a letter. When was the last time you wrote a letter to your friend in a group? I think it happened a long time ago. I can't remember because nowadays people do emails, people do texting. I don't know, but maybe some people still write letters. I'm not so sure. So if you are saying that sentence, you say, Sisi tunandika barua. This is how it's written. Sisi, we... To na andika and then barua. Okay, so you'll have cc we to na andika. We are writing barua. Okay, cc to na andika barua. We are writing a letter. We are writing a letter. Cc to na andika barua. That's how we say it. Okay, so let's move. I hope you're following. We go to Nini, you all. Mm. Nini, mm. okay, so let's look at a sentence. Nini, mna pika chakula. Nini, mna pika chakula. Or Nini, mna pika. Let me write here, chakula. Okay, so we have nini mnapika chakula. You are cooking food. So you have a new word, which is pika. Pika means cook. Cook, pika. And chakula is food. So chakula in Swahili is food. And the act of cooking is pika. So if you put them together, nini mnapika chakula, you get you are cooking food. But remember the you we are talking about is like you all, okay? So nini mnapika chakula, you all are cooking food. Like that, okay? So let's move to the last one, wow. So if you're referring to they or them, okay? So here we have wow represented by wa. So let's move to a sentence. Um, we can say, wow, wana soma kitabu. Wow, wana soma kitabu. Wow, wana soma kitabu, which is, they are wana soma 
and then we have kitabu okay wow wanasoma kitabu they are reading a book they are reading a book remember book is kitabu and soma is read or study so in this context read wow wanasoma kitabu they are reading a book wow wanasoma kitabu okay so up to that point i hope it is very clear you now know how to construct a sentence using the present tense na so like here they and then wow wow wa and then the na is our present tense and then the soma is the act okay is the verb wow wanasoma kitabu okay so lastly another way you can construct these sentences you can um you can try to omit this one and just use this which is very right so most people as we do conversation as natives it's not a must you include this but this one is is used just to direct you to know that you are talking about yourself another person and maybe they okay so you can actually say this sentence wanasoma kitabu without the wow and it should be correct okay you can actually say um you can actually say nina imba wimbo nina imba wimbo and that will be very correct so you can use mimi nina imba wimbo or nina imba wimbo both are correct because the ni here is our subject prefix which refers to i or me okay the wa here is our subject prefix which refers to they wanasoma kitabu so tell me the easy way that you can use in the comment section okay i hope you've understood in my next class i will go on teaching you the other tenses perfect tense sorry present perfect tense past tense and future tense okay thank you so much for watching thank you so much for watching if you've not subscribed kindly hit the subscribe button below kindly hit the subscribe button below and i'll be very thankful for supporting me thank you so much once again until next time in our next class see you kwaheri